One issue that matters most to voters going into this election is climate change. And it affects everybody, everywhere, all communities. And here to join us is the National Field Director of Moms Clean Air Force and a recent author of a New York Times opinion piece called Black Women Are Leaders in the Climate Movement is Heather McTeer. Tony, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. Um, it's great to have you here. So you wrote this op-ed, and it essentially says, uh, you know, despite stereotypes, and this is quoting from you. I love this line, so I pulled it. Uh, despite stereotypes of a lack of interest in environmental issues among African Americans, Black women, particularly Southern Black women, are no strangers to environmental activism. So you are you are the regional director, uh, a regional administrator of the EPA under Obama. So you are an environmentalist. You uh, are were the youngest mayor of Greenville, Mississippi. So you are uh, uh, you're involved in politics. So tell us uh, why you wrote this piece and and what you mean by it. You know, it's amazing because all my life I've seen African American women who have been leaders in climate, uh, and we just haven't gotten headlines. So it's a, it's oftentimes lost on the larger environmental community that when you're talking to communities of color, they're leaders that we're talking to each and every day. That was certainly my experience, um, both as a kid growing up in the Mississippi Delta, but also as mayor and as regional administrator for EPA, and now in my role at Moms Clean Air Force. Um, women are very active in the movement, and African American women, especially in the South, have had a connection to the land for so long that it's a part of who we are. So you can't separate climate and environmental issues from our everyday activity. And that's what I was hoping to bring some light to, um, that there are a lot of different voices that are very engaged in this conversation. And if we listen to people who have been connected for years and years and years, we may be able to talk about not only some new solutions, but opportunities to reach communities of color uh, and bring them into this conversation in a larger way. So why do you think that people don't necessarily think um, people of color when it comes to environmental activism? It's all about stereotyping and framing what you see. You know, a lot of times the stereotype of environmental work is people who are hugging trees and wearing Birkenstocks. Yep. And reality is- I know is, plenty uh, of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, folks uh, in my part of the, the country and here in the state of Mississippi, um, folks work in their gardens. They talk about what the hunting seasons are like. They talk about crops. They talk about uh, how their knees ache when the rain is gonna come because they got arthritis. You know, it's part of our conversation. And I think it's been passed down from generation to generation. So we're, we've been a part of this talk, we've been in the environment, but we have not really been really wrapped into the larger uh, objectives of how we talk about environmental issues in our communities. So, you know, I talk a bit about environmental justice, which is very, very critical to a number of our communities across this country, communities of color in particular. But we should begin to see African American people about involved in the conversation about sustainability, resiliency, green economy, how we can turn uh, having the conversation of climate and clean energy, 100% uh, clean energy, into wealth builders for communities of color. I think as we begin to have those conversations a bit more, then we're engaging segments of the population who see this more than just somebody who's trying to save the trees, but trying to save entire communities because we're all going to be impacted by climate. Uh, hi, Heather, it's JR. Um, so I was talking, we were thinking about when you, the, the stereotype is the tree hugger with the Birkenstocks, and that was floated and caught on because it has such a negative stereotype. So I think because with the missing of, of uh, Black folks, particularly black women who have been on this for so long, how do you connect that to say other folks? Or even just, you specifically said black women, like black men uh, even to get on this, on this train. I, I see where you're trying to go, but then how do you flip such a normally negative stereotype and make it a positive one for folks to even listen to? We already know many people don't listen to folks in the black community already when it comes to political advancements and agendas anyway. So this seems like an uphill battle. I just wonder what your approach is to make it stick. You know, it's interesting because it's an uphill battle outside of our community. You know, when I'm thinking and I'm talking about folks like I talked about in the article, like Dr. Mildred McLean, who's working in the community in Savannah, Georgia, people know without a shadow of a doubt that Dr. McLean is not only focused on environmental issues, but she's focused on how to improve the community as a whole because it's been integrated into every single thing that she talks about. Same thing with um, Nataki Osborne, Jelks, who is in Atlanta, Georgia 
And while she's a professor at Spelman College and teaching environmental sciences, she's also very well integrated into the West Atlanta community where this is a part of the normal every single day conversation. So it's more than just talking about environment as this far off a thing that is in the future that we may or may not have to be impacted by. It's woven into everything from criminal justice to housing to education to financial wealth. And I think as we begin to frame it in that way, we see where it's integrated into our communities already yeah. and not something that's so far de detached from us. And finally, you're involved in, uh, I mean, the, uh, the Moms Clean Air Force. Uh, how do people get in contact with that? How do they join the fight that, that you're waging? Absolutely. Well, we are a community of over 1.2 million moms, dads, grandmas, aunts, play cousins from all over the country. <laughs> and you can reach us with, through uh, momscleanairforce.org. And it sounds and spelled exactly like it sounds, momscleanairforce.org. Uh, connect up with us on Twitter, on Facebook. You can follow us at Clean Air Moms. You can follow me at Heather McTeer. Um, we want to hear from all of our moms and all of our family across from the country because it's ultimately about protecting this climate and protecting our planet um, for our children. I have a almost three year old and a 13 year old at home. So uh, if I don't do this for them, then uh, you know that's what the fight is about. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Heather McTeer, Tony, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Here on The Damage Report, we talk a lot about the big banks and their ways of getting rich off the poor. They saturate the market, but there are other options. And I've got info on a socially and environmentally responsible financial institution that has no ATM fees, gives you cash back on every purchase. They even commit 10% of their earnings to charity. It's called Aspiration, and if you go to aspiration.com slash TYT to sign up, you'll get these perks and that's more money to spend or save or to spend, just treat yourself.